Bye. Oh, you want your favorite books. <laughs> show everyone, show the book. Share the book with them. <laughs> That's it's time for bed. <sighs> what does the snake say? Go tell him, tell him. What does the snake say? Go tell him. What does the snake say? <laughs> ah, it's gonna go really well. Come here, come sit, Danny. Come play. Come play. <laughs> Dennis is gonna do his thing. I said, you know what? I'm just gonna get this video done. <laughs> yes, me behind the toddler. I'm gonna try to get this video done. Um, exactly, I know, I hear you. Uh, because I really wanna get it done and you just gotta, you know. Just, okay, no, 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 no. That's the one thing, no, no. No touch, okay? Thank you, Dan, I appreciate that, I really do. You're, you're a big help, okay? Uh, you know, I just gotta keep, keep living life. I wanted to get this done quickly so I don't have to do it later. Um, when there are other things I have to do, other quality time with family. He's trying to just doing his little choice time right now, so I figured we're gonna do it. Dan, please don't, please don't get up on the couch, please. Okay, I give up. No, I'm hopeful, yes I am, hopeful for today. Take this music and use it, let it take you away. And be hopeful, hopeful, and he'll make a way. I know it. Hi everyone, welcome to the stand and to our library. So in today's video, I'm really excited to talk about the topic of books. It is something that I have loved my whole life and have recently fallen back in love with children's books because of my kids and I have fully dived in. As you can see, I have this behind me. I have probably like two other shelves, not this big, but about half the size, so maybe would equal to about another one of these of kids' books. And then my kids have books even up in their room a little bit, not quite as much either, but a lot of books. And I have a lot of books in front of me here that I've kind of collected from all the different rooms of our absolute favorites. Of course, these are some of them as well, but one thing I will say about a majority of the books that are behind me is that they are almost all secondhand. Uh, we have collected them either families have just passed them on to us for free we have gone to yard sales library sales are really great like Goodwill and secondhand shops we've also shopped at uh, so some have been given for free some have been given at a or we have bought at a very small cost and that has been really enjoyable to see these lot these books have another life for a new kid and we're excited once the kids grow out of them to then gift them to other kids to enjoy as well because books can continue no matter how old they are to bring life to children and to adults um, the same. So I can't say enough about books. I do love them uh, so much. So I wanna share with you some of my favorites I of course will say there is a large chunk that will be kids books, but I will also share some of my adult favorites as well, or ones that I enjoy just myself. Uh, and so stay tuned for all of that. Hopeful, yes I am, hopeful for today. Take this music and use it, let it take you away. Woo! All right, where do we even begin? I have so much in front of me right now. I did kind of try to think of different categories, uh, you know, one being like just authors that we like. You know, there are some books where it's like that author either only wrote that one book or that's the only book we really enjoyed or have had the chance to enjoy yet. Um, but there are some where it's like, okay, yeah, this is an author we keep going back to. So why don't we start there? That's always fun. 
So a classic that I really love is Eric Carle. Um, this is a really good one. It's Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? He's got so many great classics. Another one I have right here is A House for Hermit Crab. Uh, there's one about 10 rubber duckies that I love that we get at the library sometimes. We don't have ourselves. My absolute favorite, which we don't have either, but it's like my go-to if uh, at baby showers, a really great thing that some baby showers do is they ask instead of signing a card that you provide a book and sign that uh, and that for their child to enjoy uh, and always think of you. And I did that for my baby shower and I absolutely cherish all the books that we got and love seeing the notes and all of them. And um, I have loved gifting them as well. And so the book that I tend to love to give, which I haven't even given my kids themselves, which is kind of crazy, I will have to do that is, I can't even remember the name, I'm gonna have to put it up here, but it's something like Papa Give Me the Moon, and it's an absolutely wonderful story. I absolutely love that book as well. Another recent favorite has been Nicola O'Byrne, I believe, and uh, you'll see there's a common theme. Not surprising that our kids are very silly, and so a lot of the books we like have that kind of silly theme to them. Of course, well, all kids can be silly too, so I'm sure that these will be popular anyway. So this one's What's Next Door. This is one of her books, and it is all about kind of um, helping the alligator get to the right habitat. So you get really involved and you draw a circle and make a door and then you have to imagine somewhere where the um, alligator would like to be but then he gets into the ocean and he doesn't want to be there so you got to think of something else and it gets really silly and fun and both kids love it. Dennis actually really gravitates to it almost even more. He always grabs these books not even that he fully understands them, but for whatever reason, he really gets a kick out of them. So these are big hits in our house. Another author that I really enjoyed that we actually only have one book to, and it's another author that I like to gift to others, is Peter H. Reynolds. He has a lot of great books, and I would love to collect all of them at some point, but they're a little bit pricey like books can be. Uh, and they're on the newer side, so you usually don't see them on the market uh, on second hand. But the one that we got from my dear friend Kate, who is a teacher and always gifts our kids the best books, is Happy Dreamer. And it's just the sweetest book. It really talks all about, you know, not um, letting others squash your dreams or squash your voice and, you know, who you are as a person and just making sure you have space for yourself to be who you want to be. And I really love that one. I gave my nephew at, the, at his baby shower, uh, the North Star, which is all about, again, you know, finding your purpose and, you know, going down that path and, and finding inspiration and being the person who you are meant to be and who you want to be. And so he has a lot of books like that. He also has books on diversity and speaking up and a lot of great books. I keep forgetting. I should check at the library more about Peter H. Reynolds. I'll admit I haven't. So maybe we'll check some more out at the library as well. Always a great resource. I think most people might remember this author and it's Margaret Wise Brown. And she has so many wonderful classics. These are two of them. I forgot to bring down Runaway Rabbit, which might be, or Runaway Bunny, which might be one of, be our favorite. But right now, actually, this one is Dennis's favorite. And it's Good Day, Good Night. It's her most recent. It came out just in 2017, which Good Night Moon came out 1947. So I'm actually curious about the story behind this book coming out recently. But um, it's a really cute story about waking up and starting your day, and then as the day goes on, the moon, the sun goes down, the moon comes up, and now we're saying good night. Uh, and it's all about the town and all the animals around it going to bed and waking up and all the fun that's included in that. So I really enjoy this and really great artwork. Good night, moon. Such a classic. I'll have to admit, this has been stuck in Lee's room. I keep meaning to bring it into Dennis's because Dennis is at the perfect age for enjoying this. Lee still enjoys this, too. He actually hasn't read it in a while because one thing with Lee for bedtime that we've been noticing is that he has not been reading bedtime books as much. He's, like, taking out encyclopedias and, like, informational books, and we're like, it's time to quiet our minds. Let's quiet down. Where he's just like, let's learn, learn, learn. Um, which probably says 
something about that he's not getting enough learning time during the day or enough dedicated time from Joe or I, um, specifically me since I see him most of the day, um, to do those kind of things. So I need to probably dedicate, I do need to dedicate more time to that with him, but um, we still enjoy learning with him at night too. But this is a really good one. Of course, it helps kids with words and just identifying and it's just really a classic. It's a classic. <laughs> this is not kind of with my author theme, but I do enjoy it. Uh, it's Good Night Lab. It's kind of off of Good Night Moon. And if you are a lab technician or a scientist, you will get a kick out of this one. My mom is. And so we really enjoy reading this to the kids to say like, this is what your Nana does. So other classics from my childhood that I've enjoyed reliving with my kids are Mercer Mayer and the Berenstein Bears. Um, so many to choose from. These again are just hand-me-downs um, that we have. Uh, we also have gotten a couple of like treasury books. So with these kind of classics where they have, they're very prolific writers and they have lots of books. You can get treasury books where it's kind of a lot of stories all in one, which is nice to have on hand. Um, but here are just a couple of those. Another classic is Richard Scary. This one's a particular favorite. Watch Your Step, Mr. Rabbit. Lee got such a kick out of this one. And this is one of the first books he kind of memorized and would do with us and kind of knew all the words too. Uh, so this is a special one to us at Lee and Dennis's Nana's that she has some Richard Scary books and they're all about like cars and things that go and Lee loves that book. So that's a big hit as well, especially because it's super silly. Like all the cars are like pickle cars, banana cars, Cars, a banana boat. It's just really funny. Um, so I really enjoy um, Richard Scary as well. Another series that we really enjoy is Pete the Cat. Again, this might be one that you've heard of. It's a little bit more of a more recent as in it wasn't around when I was a kid, um, but it is a big hit nowadays. Uh, so many great books. Dennis has been loving Pete the Cat. And the great thing about Pete the Cat is a lot of the stories are about Pete making mistakes and something getting broken or lost or ruined and kind of teaching kids to, to realize that, hey, that those things happen. Try not to get upset. Things will come and things will go, which is actually one of Dennis's favorites. I have it here in Dennis's pile. This has been such a hit with Dennis. This might be his absolute favorite right now, and it's Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons, and it's about how he keeps losing his buttons, and then at the end, spoiler alert, uh, he ends up saying, I don't have any more buttons left, but guess what I'll always have? My belly button, and Dennis gets such a kick out of it. He always like points out where his belly button is, and he keeps going, uh-oh, and he loses the buttons, and then he finds his belly button. It's such a kick, it's like, really great. And a lot of these are actually kind of like songs. You don't get the um, melody, so I make it up on my own. Um, I'm always, I always love to see, like, I always wonder like what the author intended the melody to be, because I'm like, I'm sure it's not the one I've come up with, which is really funny to think of. Little Golden Book, gosh. The possibilities with Little Golden Book. Uh, but I just wanted to point out this one specifically. This is the monster at the end of this book. We love even more so another monster at the end of this book. Uh, those are huge hits. Again, super, super silly. Asks for a lot of participation from the readers and the kids. Uh, and just Grover and Elmo, they're the best. So another big hit in our family. I still got a few prolific authors in here. There's some really, really busy uh, children's authors uh, that, that we have enjoyed their work. Another one is Mo Willems. He's again a more recent one in the last decade. Um, this is one of the ones I could find on hand. I'm a frog, super cute, wicked silly. He's got a lot of great ones. He has a lot with the elephant and piggy. He also has a lot with, oh my gosh, who is it? The pigeon. Um, he, Lee really enjoys elephant and piggy. We haven't done a lot with the pigeon. There's one in particular that we got from the library called the mystery reader that Lee got such a kick out of. And it's really great for kids that are kind of pre-reading or really getting into reading themselves because it encourages them uh, to, you know, sound out words and get excited about being able to read. And Lee gets a, such a kick out of that book. And um, I think it really helped him get excited about uh, reading, which he is still in the very early stages of right now. But Mo Willems is such a good hit. 
Um, I will list another one that I got from the library somewhere you'll see here um, that I don't think is a popular one because it's not one of his popular series, but we really enjoyed and it was a really silly and funny book. Another popular author, I believe at least around here, is Sandra Boynton. Really great little board books. I think they might all be board books. I've never seen her have a paperback book. Um, but both kids enjoy these. This again, these two books right here were some of the very first books that Lee memorized and it was the cutest thing. This one of course is very easy because you're basically just pointing out all the different colors and articles of clothing and it's very silly because one character continues to not put on the clothing correctly. Um, but this one I've actually been using with Lee recently with the uh, kind of teaching him early stages of reading where because it's the same word, you know, I point out like, can you point out all the words that say hat? Um, and so he can recognize H-A-T and start to see it over and over again. Oh, that's hat. And then again, shirt and things like that. And we've been doing that recently and he's been enjoying that. And then, but not the hippopotamus. Again, very silly. Um, has a rhyme that's somewhat easy to remember and uh, I just have such fond memories of Lee reading this to everybody and uh, it's just being very very cute. I'm only on one pile still. I gotta get moving here. Another author is Sherry Dusky Rinker and Tom Lichtenhall. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right um, but she has quite a few books I actually don't think I even have her most popular down here with me. It is somewhere. We do have it. It's Good Night, Good Night Construction Site, which is a big hit for kids that enjoy construction vehicles. But another big hit for us is Steam Train, Dream Train. I think some people I thought I saw in reviews didn't enjoy this one as much, but I actually really enjoy it. And I read this quite a bit to Dennis. I will say um, I have to kind of paraphrase because there are not a lot of words on the page but a few more and he's kind of ready to move on so I paraphrase and point out a lot of things in this book right now and two other books that have been hits that might not be in our house that are might not be as popular as Mighty Mighty Construction Site which is kind of the opposite of Good Night Good Night Construction Site and that it's all about kind of the day and what the construction like construction site is like during the day and waking up with all the construction vehicles um, and how they all work as a team and then three cheers for kid mcgear is such a great hit as well it's about a, a, a um skid steer i always say it wrong because i want to say kid mcgear skid steer um that ends up kind of saving the day and even though he's small he is mighty i think i'm on my last one for prolific reader writers that we enjoy which i will say again this does not list all of them clifford the dog arthur curious george amelia bedelia those are also ones that we enjoy um, but these are like our favorite favorites and that is nancy tillman these are kind of tear jerkers so be ready for that okay a huge hit since christmas actually when we were down in florida I brought down a book. Let me see if I have it. Actually, there were two books. My mom sent one with us as kind of a gift for us to enjoy, uh, for Lee to have as we went on our way. And then I had just brought one down that we had got at some point, and that is the DK sticker books. Oh my gosh, did this open up a new world to us? Uh, Lee absolutely loves these. We've gone through so many though that he's kind of hit his limit for now. Um, or at least we have and we're like, okay, we can't buy you anymore. And so uh, <laughs> we're gonna take a break on this, but they're so great. They're kind of encyclopedias about a certain topic. Uh, and so this one was Finding Nemo and it has all great information, not only about Nemo, but also just about the ocean and the anatomy of the, the fish and, um, you know, the biomes and um, reefs and, and everything like that. And so what's great about the book is it has really great information. And then what they have is either just landscapes where you can put stickers that you like. And so then in the book they have, which of course Lee has completed all of them. Uh, so it's hard to see. Actually, here's one. I guess he never put in. But they have um, kind of silhouettes 
where you have to figure out what sticker goes there. Of course, you can find out by reading it, or if you're like Lee and you're not quite reading yet, you just memorize the silhouette and find the corresponding sticker and stick it on there. And Lee loved these. He got such a kick out of them. And so um, when we enjoyed them in Florida, I had said for Christmas, for people asking, you know, what Lee would like, and I said, I think, you know, I think he'd really enjoy some more DK sticker books. And one in particular that he absolutely fell in love with and opened up another world to us is this dinosaur book. And it had a world of silhouettes that he could go through and pick out and put them on there. And it had all different facts. It has them grouped into all the different dinosaurs, small vegetarians, it has large vegetarians, um, carnivores, it has, um, tree dwellers in the sky and Lee memorized all these groups and you every single one on here I think he could list what was great about this book is it also had the pronunciations of the dinosaurs because they are not at all what we would have thought they would have been and it has a lot of great information about them too so very informational Lee loved all of it he loved putting the stickers there he loved learning about them he just absolutely fell in love with these and um couldn't get enough of them animals tractors Finding Dory, Diggers and Dumpers, Toy Story 4, Bugs, Zoom Zoom, <laughs> and Star Wars. But on top of that, there aren't just sticker books. Sometimes they do just have like big coffee books too. And this is one of the ones that Lee has really enjoyed. We actually got this from the library at first. When he first started falling in love with dinosaurs, I reached out to the library and I said, Hey, give me any great kids dinosaur books that you have on the shelves that you can you can uh, send our way. And so this was one of them, and it's the Smithsonian um, partnered up with DK to put this book together. Uh, really great illustrations, awesome information. Um, so shows size, habitat, diet, um, and when they were around. The one thing it doesn't have is the pronunciations, which uh, I have found have been very important to Lee and to us. There were certain ones that like we said wrong for the longest time because it wasn't in the other DK book or we didn't know how to pronounce it from here and then we heard it on a show and we're like, oh, we've been totally saying it wrong this whole time. And for whatever reason that bothered us. What was it? We always called something Diplodocus and it's dip. no, no. We always said du Diplodocus and it was Diplodocus. We're like, oh, sorry. And another one was uh, Giganotosaurus is the right way, but we said Gigantosaurus because that's how it's spelled. I don't know where Giganotosaurus came from, but it, it, you can get into a whole other world when it comes to pronouncing uh, dinosaurs. And Lee will help you uh, if you need correcting. <laughs> he always asks if you want to know though. <laughs> Continuing on the topic of learning, I want to share some books that specifically had a, a learning component to them. Another uh, kind of series of books that we have enjoyed, of course, is The Magic School Bus. These are all secondhand hand-me-downs that we've enjoyed. We take out a lot from the library as well. Uh, and they can be about all kinds of things. A recent favorite has been The Magic School, school Bus Gets Recycled. Lee has really enjoyed kind of learning about that process. Um, but there's a lot of other great ones. Magic School Bus gets baked into a cake, um, and they can be very fun. These are, can be very heavy on text, so again, depending on your kid's age, you may paraphrase, you might just share little bits here and there, um, and kind of whatever they might be interested in. They might just ask questions, and, and you might be able to answer them from what's on the page. Um, so you kind of make it work for, for your kids. Another series that we have enjoyed is Ordinary People Change the World. This was one that was gifted to us, which was I Am Neil Armstrong, which is just a great story, of course, about the first man to walk on the moon. And it goes into great length about how, what his childhood was like and what led him to become the first astronaut or man to walk on the moon. And um, how all of that happened. Uh, so it's a really great story. Uh, and is written for kind of kids to understand and enjoy. Again, quite detailed, um, but if you're anything like my son Lee, you'll listen through all of it and take it all in. If you're like Dennis, I probably would 
you know, just point out things here and there on the page. Of course, he is much younger at this age anyway, so this would probably be a little too old for him, but um, as he will get older, I think he'll enjoy this. We also have the Walt Disney one, which if you are a fan of Disney World, I think that you would really enjoy that as well. These two books have been a big hit. Lee went to a program at our uh, at the Boston at Boston's Aquarium, the New England Aquarium, and they had these in their library, and Lee loved them. We had to add them to our collection. Uh, so it is a cute little book where it's a flashlight that you have to find certain animals on each page, and Lee gets a real kick out of it and has all different information about them. This one focuses on the octopus. This one on a shark clownfish, turtle, dolphin, and killer whale. So um, that one's fun. And then this one as well, Moonlight Animals. I think the ocean one is a little bit of a bigger hit in our family, but um, we do enjoy uh, this one as well. A recent hit that was actually meant for Joe, but Lee has stolen is the United States of Sports. I got this for Joe um, when he had his surgery. I thought he'd enjoy this while he was kind of more stationary for a couple of weeks. And uh, very quickly, Lee kind of uh, stole it from him and they've been enjoying it together. This is one of those books where Lee needs to read at night um, with Joe and needs to kind of just take in all the information. Uh, so what it basically is, is it's an atlas of um, every state in America and how, um, you know, just facts about that state, you know, where certain players may have been born, what schools they went to, what sports teams are in those states. Um, New Hampshire doesn't have a whole lot going on. We're a little bit smaller. Um, but of course, you know, you have other ones like California, Florida, um, that have a lot of great information. They, every state's really fun. Uh, and Lee specifically uh, has fell, fallen in love from this book with Mookie Betts. <laughs> That's his new favorite player. And he likes to joke around and say his name is Mookie Metz and he asks Joe to tickle him and it's this big inside joke they have. Uh, and so Lee talks about it all the time, but he is a fan of Mookie Betts and he'll tell everyone about him and how he was on the Red Sox and now he's on the Dodgers. Um, but this is a fun book for all ages. Another series of informative books is the um, the Cat in the Hat's Learning Library has put out quite a few fun topics to learn about. This is all about safari animals, this is about anatomy, um, sea creatures, we got space, and we have bugs. Uh, so really great uh, informational books. Again, it's quite a bit of information on each page, but uh, Lee takes it all in and loves it all, asks lots of questions, and uh, just really enjoys them. And I enjoy them as well. A lot of great illustration and just really fun. It has rhymes, but also has, you learn a lot from them at any age, again. And last one, if you love dinosaurs and if you are a fan of Dino Dana, I cannot recommend enough the Dino Dana series. She has two Dino Field Guides, Volume 1 and 2. Lee has both and he absolutely loves them. It could be informational even if you have not watched the series. It is a Amazon Prime original, um, but even if you haven't seen this show, it still is just as informational and fun. You don't miss out too much, um, but it does kind of show you what the episodes are like and what she learns um, in, in each one, but you do not have to have watched the show to enjoy this. But I do recommend the show. I've been doing this so long, my leg is asleep. I'll try to work through that. But another, um, I guess a company that I really enjoy that puts out books and magazines is the Highlights. Um, and these are the zero to two age books that are um, magazines that uh, we were gifted to for Dennis's first birthday. We really enjoy, he gets such a kick out of these. Very simple, lots of pictures of babies, which he absolutely loves. Um, and he'll read this all by himself. We'll read it with him and he gets a kick out of it. Lee also for his birthday, second year in a row, he's been enjoying High Five, which is for the three to five age range. We get these once a month and he loves finding them in the mailbox and I enjoy reading them with him as well. 
And so they are mostly known for their magazines, but I did just want to point out that they do also have books that you can get and get. And again, these were all gifted to us um, for Dennis's birthday. There, I think were three of these, but I only have two on me right now, but these are just find it books. And then we also have first 101 words, which is a lot of um, flaps and uh, things like that, which Dennis uh, also enjoys. Uh, so those have been big hits. And I think they also have quite a bit of curriculum on there and different packages of books that, um, you know, might be on a certain topic or might be for a certain age, like preschool or um, pre-K or kindergarten or even older. So um, definitely recommend checking out that website in general. They have some great sales sometimes. Um, so check that out. I really, really recommend um, this company to a lot of people. All right, we're getting there. Uh, I have to do this because I think many of you that watch enjoy Disney as I do. Um, so I have a whole pile here for um, Disney specific books. Um, and I'm, most of them actually are, I think, from Disney, um, from the company Disney Press um, themselves. Uh, as, I point, as I said, this one is not, but it is about Walt Disney. So just wanted to point out this book as well, um, which is part of the Ordinary People Change the World series. From there, we have some really great board books. These two we had given to Dennis for Christmas. It's Furry Friends, which is a touch and feel book um, that has kind of the It's a Small World theme. Uh, so you see a different one from a different animal from uh, all the different countries featured in It's a Small World. And very similar, this is a Guess Who, which has a reflection on each which if you look very closely most of them have big lick marks on them because Dennis likes to give himself a kiss um, but very cute for babies and young youngins this is an old one from Lee's time that is a flat book where you have to find Dory both kids have really enjoyed this some flaps have been ripped off they've enjoyed it so much um, but it's still a big hit and uh, we really love it a very well loved one is just the It's a Small World book. So loved it has fallen apart. Um, but it has all the different um, greetings from, all, uh, from a lot of the countries featured in It's a Small World. You have seen some of our older CRL soon vlogs with Leah Disney. This has been a well beloved book um, that both kids have enjoyed. And I think my last two board books that I either could find, although I think these are all of them, um, is this Good Night Sleep Type book, which again is another touch and feel. We've got Dumbo's leathery ear. We've got Simba's soft coat. We've got the shiny um, tags on the puppies, the soft Bambi, and the glittery, scratchy Alice in Wonderland. And then we have a Jungle Cruise book as well, which is just all about the different animals. Speaking of Jungle Book, we have kind of the older version uh, for Lee that he enjoys. And it is in pretty much the exact script of what you would see on Jungle Cruise. Of course, they improvise here and there, so it's not exact. Um, but it is some of those classic jokes that you will know and love from Jungle Cruise. Uh, so Lee really, really gets a kick out of this and it actually comes with a CD, which I don't think we've ever listened to because we don't have a CD player, which is narrated by uh, John Lasseter. And uh, so Lee gets a super kick out of this. It has the backside of water in it and a uh, great illustration in general. The other one from the series is The Haunted Mansion, another one that Lee absolutely loves. And it is the script from the ride. Of course, it doesn't include the whole thing, but the, some of the big lines that you always um, know and love and remember. And it also has the CD for you to listen to. Um, so Lee gets a big kick out of this, seeing all the different parts from the ride. When we went to Disney for that extended stay, we brought both of these down and he loved at the, when we came back from the park reading these and remembering experiencing them when we were at the park. So these are great ones to bring with you on your trip for your kids to re-experience it at when you um, lay your heads down uh, after a long day at the parks. 
Another one that is park specific that we really love, uh, which is for adults and kids alike, is the Maps of the Disney Parks book. Um, I particularly really love this because it has the um, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom map in here, which is wonderful since that has uh, closed now. We will always, if we somehow lose it, um, the ones that we have um, on hand, we'll always be able to look back on it in this book. But it has maps from as far back as you can go from the very opening of Disneyland um, all the way to more recent with D Tokyo Disney and things like that. So a really enjoyable kind of coffee table, but also just a, a coffee table book for adults to enjoy, but Lee enjoys it as well. And then I think my last couple of ones from Disney are actually kind of um, encyclopedia type books where it talks on a very specific subject um, and introduce you to all those those characters. So this one's just a who's to, who's who. It's an A to Z of pretty much any Disney character you can imagine. Uh, I'm trying to see when this came out. Um, it says copyright 2017, so it wouldn't have any story uh, characters from after that. But if it was from before that, it probably has it here. This says Jim Deer and Darling. Uh, it has the Little Mermaid, Mo oh, Moana, it has Monsters University and Monsters Inc, uh, Pinocchio, you know, the list goes on. So really fun uh, and informational uh, that Lee really enjoys. And then on the other end, more specific, and we got this for Christmas for Lee because of his love of Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, and that's the villain's book. And uh, although he is a, a very kind-hearted person, he does enjoy learning about the villains. And it actually almost helps him like understand the villains more and opens up a conversation where we can talk about the villains and how they came to be, why they are, whether they're misunderstood, um, whether we think, you know, there could be a good side to them uh, and kind of all of that. So I think it, it helps have those conversations where when you're watching the movie or if they watch maybe the movie on their own at a friend's house or something, um, this is something you can kind of follow up on and, and kind of have more of those conversations about, you know, who are the villains and why are they the way they are and why do we see them the way we do. Lastly, on the Disney topic, I wanted to share the Disney Princess Cookbook. I think I shared this on a live, but I wanted to share it with you here as well. You can see it's got tags all over it on the topper ones we are working on right now. Here are either ones we've done in the past or we look forward to doing. Um, just this week, we made the Hop and John, which uh, I really enjoyed, Dennis really enjoyed. Lee, not so much. I think the black eyed peas might have been a little too much for him. He's gonna be a little picky like that. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, it has ham, celery, rice, and uh, carrots, and the black eyed peas. And uh, it, was, it was really enjoyable. Um, that one was a little bit more intensive. Uh, but there are other ones that we have enjoyed doing uh, that have not been, uh, you know, been very easy for Lee to uh, be included on. One of them is Aurora's Homemade Jam. That was the first one we ever did. Um, a big hit in our family that's actually one we've now cooked many times uh, because usually we're trying to get through all of them, but there's one that we're like, okay, we know we like this and we keep making it is Gus's Mac and Cheese. It's actually Gus's Hamburger Mac and Cheese um, because it does have hamburg in it and it's really good. Um, it does give you a big batch, um, so usually I'll make it and then we'll enjoy it for the rest of the week. Couple other classics I wanted to sprinkle in there. Pat the Bunny. Another one is Goodnight Gorilla. This is a nice classic that uh, we really enjoy. Dennis loves this one and we loved it as well when he was younger. This was actually gifted from a viewer of Cereal Soon and I wish I remembered uh, who it was, but uh, Harry the Dirty Dog. I don't think I ever would have thought to get this myself. I did not know this story, but absolutely love it. It's so cute. One thing that um, I always think is a great idea is to get books that uh, you can put your kids' names into. This one is from the company Put Me In The Story. Um, I can leave the link below. But this is one I got for uh, Lee and Joe as a gift for Christmas. Um, and what you can do is uh, say who it's uh, for, who it's from, and then you also can include a, include a picture. So I include a picture of Dad and Lee, who, who is younger than Dennis in this picture, and then uh, left a little store, uh, little note for them. And then it includes his name all throughout, and then anywhere where there's a uh, picture frame, which I think, let me see, somewhere along here. 
Uh, you'll see that picture of Joe and uh, Lee in there. So super cute. I have a couple others as well. Joe um, got one in return the next Christmas for me and Lee about Winnie the Pooh and how he loves Lee. Uh, so a uh, really great idea and kids to cherish forever. Another suggestion of books to keep in mind uh, for younger kids, although you might want to be close at hand if you don't want them to rip all the flaps off, our lift and flap books we have enjoyed these sesame street versions some of these have been hand me down some of these have been gifted to us um this is elmo's abc and has been a big hit this one in particular i don't know if it's just been because it's been in his room um, but dennis has really enjoyed this one uh it has numbers it has letters it has opposites it has uh shapes and it has just anything anything in a, in a room uh, and Dennis has really enjoyed that. Um, and yes, they can kind of bend and break and rip the flaps, but it's all part of the fun. And although it kind of tears in my heart a little bit to see it happen, um, I still will keep getting them for them because they do enjoy them so much. Another type of book, doesn't have to be this specific one that I always suggest, especially for younger kids, are books that have puppets on them. Uh, this one is a particular favorite of ours, Curious George. We have a couple other ones which are very small, like kind of board books that you stick your finger in and it has like a little animal and character and they also get a kick out of those. So puppets, anything that you can kind of get little kids excited about reading, keep their interest, um, is always a big hit. And finally, as for kids book, I'm down to my last two. There's actually a couple I kind of just skipped over because I'd be here forever, is The Very Impatient Caterpillar and Dan Brown's Wild Symphonies. This was just a random book, I think, that was suggested to me and I, I did um, just purchase for Lee and a super great book about teaching patience and it does it in a really funny way where you know it helps kids understand the importance of patience but doesn't do it in a very preachy way or boring way it's a really silly and funny way we always include him in our day when we'll say mm, are you being an impatient caterpillar and uh kind of start a conversation and a really cute book you can get really into it as the narrator and uh, i really enjoy it Really, 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 oh my gosh. This became a huge hit. Our library um, has been doing what's called a book box and it's where you at the beginning fill out a survey saying you know, what your kid likes, what kind of authors you gravitate to, and then the librarians put together a, a, a box of around I think five books each month as kind of like a subscription, although it's the library so it's free. Uh, and will give you books that they think that your kid will enjoy that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. This one was in the first book box we ever got and Lee just fell in love with it and I highly suggest it. It's very interactive because um, it comes with a free app that you, if you have a smartphone you can get on your phone at no cost and um, it includes music composed by Dan Brown. If you recognize the author's name, it is because yes, he is a uh, number one best time, uh, New York Times best selling author of The Da Vinci Code and he has uh, a couple other um, popular books as well. And so in this one, um, there are just all these hidden pieces in there to keep the kids engaged. I mean, he's memorized kind of a lot of the rhymes in this as well. And they all have a lesson and kind of a, it's like a fable um, and teaches you something with each animal. So um, Lee just absolutely fell in love with this and loves the interactive piece of listening to the music and their symphonies. So it's like brain candy. I just like, I can't recommend this book enough. Really, really enjoy it and recommend it to everyone I know. So we'll leave on that note for kids books. Hopefully you got some ideas and my camera just ran out of memory, which is my cue to go. I talked for way too long. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this. May need to cut things here and there. So not all my favorite books will be in this video, but hopefully you get some great ideas uh, for books that you can read with your kids. Please share with our little pocket of the world here all the books that you enjoy and that you would suggest. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy reading, if that is something that you enjoy to do. I will leave you on that note. As you can tell, I can't say enough things about books. Um, and I know many of you are on the same page with me, so please sound off in the comments with some of your favorites and the ways that you like to read. All right, 
What's next? I got lots of books to clean up here. <laughs> I thought today we would do my favorite medium. I'm trying to act as if nothing's happening right now. If this is not a toddler standing on my couch. But there is. Hey, don't lean back. Let's try them now. What's over here? Can you show me? Uh, oh, let's show them one of your favorite books. Okay, here, here, here. Show them. Show them where Dory is. Show them. Okay, go, 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 go. You're going to go on that couch. Perfect. Awesome. So happy to see that. Um, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about favorites. Yes, Dennis. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. You want to show them? Yes. He discovered something I will be talking about in this video, which is a book light. If I can get it, him to let go of it. Every time I have, he's gotten very upset. So. Oh. I know, I know. My mind is biking. Is it Freddie Smith? Oh my God, he's climbing everything. 